Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Moose Henderson Wildlife Photography. Today we're going to take a look at what's in my camera bag and the items that I carry with me on a daily basis. It's been a couple of years since we've done a camera bag update and because of technology changes, it's important to change your equipment to keep up with it. So you'll notice in front of me, I have two camera bags. One is this black one, which is a Think Tank bag, or made by a company called Think Tank. And this is where I keep my 600 millimeter lens. And the yellow bag is primarily for landscape photography. And I got it because I've got a buddy in Tennessee that likes to hike. And I wanted to be able to get a backpack that I could go hiking with him and be able to carry a little bit of equipment. Now I don't plan to be hiking the Appalachian Trail or the PCT or anything like that. But a few miles here and there would be a nice break and would give me a chance to spend some time with my buddy. So let's put this backpack aside for right now and let's concentrate on the think tank. The first lens that we have is a 600 millimeter f4 made by Canon. Of course it has a lens hood And of course you can get other lenses like a Tamron or a Sigma or something like that that are much smaller and much cheaper but they don't go down to F4 and F4 is important because that gives you those nice creamy backgrounds that you see in wildlife images, bird images and things like that. So this is pretty much an essential piece of equipment, probably my most used piece of equipment and uh, Probably my most expensive. As we drop down in focal length, we go to a 100 millimeter to 500 millimeter zoom lens. This is an RF lens for the new Canon mirrorless type cameras. It's exceptionally sharp and an excellent quality lens and as I mentioned it covers that range from the 600 millimeter down to 100 millimeter. In the pocket directly in front we have a Canon 80D and I use this camera a lot for my vlogging and I also use the body on occasion to attach onto the 600 millimeter lens to give me a little bit more reach. This is a prosumer type of camera and you'll notice all of my cameras have a battery grip on the bottom. That allows me to have a little bit more battery power and also provides some extra hand holding on the grip and for when you go to the vertical orientation you have your finger in the appropriate place instead of trying to hold the camera like this. So that's the primary reason why I have these battery grips. And then the last major item that we have in our camera bag is an R6 Mark II. This is my primary camera. This is what I use for most of my work. The ADD is kind of a backup but the 6D does the majority of my work for my wildlife photography, landscapes, macro, and so on. In addition to the cameras, of course, we have various accessories that are in these pouches, and we also have a selection of batteries. We have a case with a couple more batteries in it and some flashcards. This is generally with me at all times, so I always have backup batteries with me and backup flashcards. Few things are more embarrassing than getting out there 
and not having the proper equipment. So my other bag, as I mentioned, is a Shimoda Action X30 version 2. And it's a bit smaller, even though it looks bigger, it holds less equipment. I carry a tripod on the side of here. And the tripod I use for my landscape photography and also for blogging. We'll get into the tripod here pretty soon. First we'll start on the camera bag. It opens from the back side. And you'll notice inside here there's not a lot of equipment and that's because there's available space to rearrange things as needed. If I need to add the 100 to 500 in here, the R6 Mark II, things like that, I've got the available space and it's set up for it. In this camera bag, the first lens that I have is a 14 to 35. This is an ultra wide angle lens for those times you want to get really close to something to accentuate like a rock or a feature and then have the background be nice and sharp also. Now I don't have an f2.8 because I don't need to go to an aperture like f2.8 very often in landscape photography. I don't do any portrait type images or weddings or anything like that. So f4 is all that I need. The next lens in my lineup is a 24 to 105. It is also an f4. It is a Canon lens just like the 14 to 35. So this covers the range from 14 millimeter all the way to 600 millimeter by having these lenses. This is a good moderate wide angle and moderate telephoto lens going up to 105 Again, like the 14 to 35, it's only an f4 because again, I just don't need f2.8 aperture. That would give me all that extra weight of an f2.8 lens and all of that extra expense. In this pocket right here in the bag, I keep my GoPro and that allows me to travel with it and to be able to have it available whenever I'm out hiking. In this pocket right here is a number of different microphones. I have a remote microphone that I can wear on my collar. I have another uh, dual type microphone and then I have two pockets empty right here that I can carry either like the 100 to 500 millimeter lens or maybe a little bit of food or something like that. That's the main pocket that we use for photography. This bag also has a top pocket and this is a good place to put things like your waterproof jacket and things like that. It's also a good place to put your drone and so this is where I keep the drone and the drone controller and various things like that is up here in this top pocket and that makes it very convenient to be able to get to anytime I need it when I need to record some drone footage. Uh, you may have noticed on my channel there hasn't been any drone footage yet and that's because I've been completing my part 107 FAA certification class. It is illegal to use drone footage in your YouTube videos if your videos are monetized. And since my videos are monetized, I want to obey the law. I've taken the class, I've passed the exam, I've gotten my certification, and we'll go over that in a future video. Now let's take a look at the tripod supports that I have. Like I mentioned for my vlogging and for my landscape photography, I've got a smaller tripod. This is an Alta Pro and I've got a ball head on top of it here and that allows us to put our camera up here and to move it as we need it. This tripod also has the ability to remove the center column and put it in sideways to be able to do things like macro work 
and various things like that where you need the camera out to the side. This is a very good little tripod and I've been using this particular brand now for about six or seven years and I'm pretty happy with it. Next on my tripod list is my big beefy tripod. And this is an NRL RT90C. And on top of it I have a Wimberley head and this allows the camera to pivot and to rotate back and forth freely. This is a very heavy duty tripod and I've had this for about four years and it's been doing a very good job. I'm very pleased with it. It's a much more economical tripod than some of the really expensive ones but it's done a good job for me. It also has a pad on it where you can carry your 600 millimeter lens up on top of your shoulder and make it real convenient. I have another NRL RT90C tripod and I keep it in this case just because I have the case, not because it really needs to be. And this tripod, I have a Manfrotto bridge type head. It's called a 502 head. This is a very sturdy head and it's excellent for landscape photography. It allows a full range of motion up and down. It's what is known as a video head, so it's a little bit more stiff than some other types of heads because it has dampening built into it but I really like it for the type of photography I do. Now both of the NRLs have this central column area that allows you to level everything and of course on top here it has some leveling bubbles. The next type of support that I carry with me everywhere I go is a bean bag and this is one of my bean bags and this goes on to the door frame of my car or I can put it on the hood of my car or wherever I need to and this provides me a nice area of support for a long lens in order to be able to get those very stable type of photographs. Now I also have what is known as a ground pod. This is nothing more than a frying pan that I've made into a ground pod and if you haven't seen my video or read my little mini book about the ground pod. I'll link the video up here in the corner and I'll also put the free guide, a link to it, down below in the show notes. Go ahead and download that and make yourself your own ground pod for about ten dollars. It's pretty economical, much cheaper than the commercial ones. This allows you to put this on top of the bean bag and to move around and to have an ultra stable support when you're shooting from the car or from the ground, like on the snow or on the grass, on the beach, and so on. We use these quite a bit because it's important to get down to eye level to your animal. Of course, if you're shooting a moose or an elk, eye level is standing up, usually. If you're shooting uh, something like a squirrel, or birds on the ground, then eye level is down on the ground. The next thing I carry with me all of the time, in fact I wear this around my waist, is this belt affair. And one pocket on the belt is here to be able to use for bear spray. Now I'm up in northwest Minnesota now and there's not too many bears up here so I don't have my bear spray in here but I usually do. This pocket over here is where I carry a wide angle lens so even if I have my super telephoto lenses and I'm out photographing something comes along that I need a wide angle lens for I've got it here right on my side. And then this little pouch over here on the other side is for my filters and the brand of filter I use is called Breakthrough it's a good quality fit filter. There's a lot of good quality ones out there. And the various ones that I have is a three stop, a six stop, 
neutral density filter. Of course, you can add those two together to get nine stops. And a circular polarizer to be able to cut out the glare from water and from, uh, from metal surfaces and stuff. Now, I don't do a lot of landscape photography. I don't have a big filter collection but those cover the majority of my needs. Well, that's been an update on my equipment and what I'm carrying here in 2023. In the near future, I hope to be able to purchase a second R6 Mark II camera body so that I have two camera bodies I can carry one camera body around my neck with the 100 to 500 and then I can have another R6 that's mounted onto the 600 millimeter and carry both of those at the same time because you never know what's going to come upon you that you need to be able to photograph. At the current time I'm using the ADD on the 600 millimeter and then carrying the R6 with the 100 to 500 around my neck. Well, that's our video for today. If you would, please give us that old thumbs up icon or like a roo as I like to call it. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, you may want to go ahead and subscribe. We put out videos at least once a week. I'm trying to get to a twice a week schedule, but I've gone through some medical issues with dental care and getting dentures and whatnot. So I've been kind of slack on getting videos out because I haven't been able to talk or not look completely hideous. So if you would, come back and see some more videos in the very near future. Thank you so much, and we'll see you back here again very soon. Goodbye. Now, if you guys would grab a couple of these tripods and the other camera bag, I would really appreciate it. Come on. Go ahead. Grab them. Okay, I'll do it myself. <laughs>